Welcome to a tour video on BitC8. In this video, I'm going to discuss locking and unlocking exits. We've now seen that we can work with avatar, the thing we move around, tiles, background, and possibly walls, sprites, things we interact with, and items, things we use. Among those, when we work with sprites or items, is the possibility to shape interactions through using the dialogue tool. As we've now seen, we have lots of possible things we can do for interactions. We can have cycle list, sequence list, shuffle list, and branching list. The branching list in particular helps us when we work with items. We can check to see, based on some condition, whether or not we do one interaction or another branch of interactions, and potentially even more branches of interactions, based on some condition. And that condition is based on generally the number of some item in inventory. So to pop that back out, let's go over to item from the paint right here. And come over to inventory and that will pop out the inventory tool right here. Now we've been paying attention to items and we'll get to variables in a future video. So within inventory then, we're interested in how many things we have. And remember, as we interact with items, we use them up, we use them. So they disappear from the room and become part of inventory. So let's change a little bit how we think about interactions. We've been thinking about interactions of dealing with sprites and items. There are other things we can interact with. Among them are exits. So we previously discussed exits as the ability to move between rooms. And rooms, as we remember, are subsections of stories or games, whatever we're creating within Bitsy. They're just subsections. So we can move from room to room using a one-way or two-way exit. As we saw in a far previous video, we were able to move from the entrance into the zoo area and back again using a two-way exit. So let's go ahead and place an exit in this room and then a, create an exit in another room. Then we will build an interaction such that we have to pick up an item in order to use that exit. So we're going to lock and unlock an exit. So let's start to do that by first over here in the room tool. I'm going to go ahead and create a copy or duplicate this room. So now we have a duplicate. Notice it has nothing in it right now. Then I'm going to come down here to Exits and Endings. So when I click on this and I pop out its tool, I have the Exits and Endings tool right here. Notice it doesn't have anything. So I'm going to go ahead and add one right here. And I want a exit. So by default, a two-way exit. Okay. So what I want then is the ability to exit and then return. So over here in Example Room, is what I want. I'm going to place up here in this upper corner right here. And then over here, I'm going to move this over here as well. So every time we come into this corner, we will come right on back to the next thing. So I'm going to create some type of condition, a branching list, such that we can only use the exit if certain conditions are true. That is, I'm interested if we have picked up a key or not. So before we go too far, let's come over here to the paint tool and look at items. And remember, whatever we create under items will automatically be added to inventory. And in fact, the default, without me adding anything, comes with something called key. So over here in item, let's move from T to key. Key automatically has some dialogue attached to it. So I'm going to pop out the dialogue tool. And as you're starting to see, we're starting to move between these tools. I don't want it to show anything, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And so now we don't have any dialogue. I'm going to close the dialogue tool. So we have a key, and I need to drop the key over here in the room tool. Over here, I will um, move back a little bit to our windows and drop a key. Uh, sorry, come over to paint. I sometimes forget that. Over to paint. I was looking currently exits. Now we're paint and put the key right there. So as is, we have an exit from one room to another, and we have a key. Well, one of the things exits can have is dialogue, or put another way, exits can have interactions. So over here in exits and endings, over here in dialogue, or exit dialogue right here, we can add what's called a lock. So I'm gonna add a lock. And over here, it re-popped up the dialogue tool for us, and it says locked exit one, branching list, it automatically assumes we want a branching list. 
and it says if key in inventory is greater than or equal to one, property locked equals false. The key opens the door. Down here, property, the door is locked. Now these come automatically built in as an example of how to do this. So the built-in example says this. If we have picked up at least one key greater than or equal to one, that is, remember, as we use keys, it gets added to the inventory. If we have interacted with at least one key, then we this property will be equal to false. Now, the use of true and false are kind of a long history within programming, but they're a way of categorizing anything that might have one of two possible answers. In this case, false means the door is unlocked, and true means the door is locked, and that applies to exits. So if the property is ever locked equals true down here, the door is locked. If lock equals false, the door is unlocked. So all this says is if we've, we've previously interacted with a key prior to interacting with the door, then it will open the door, that is, it will be unlocked, and we can use the exit. Now, currently, over here in the room, I know there's an exit there, but how would the player know there's an exit there? Well, we need to do one more thing before we kind of wrap this up and see what this looks like. So, we know of our options we can have within a room. We have an avatar, a thing we move around. We have a tile, which could possibly be background or walls. We have a sprite, which we generally use for interactions, and we have items, which are things we use up. So, Going backwards in that list, I probably don't want an item. I don't want to be used up. Doors are not really things you use up, generally. Although they could be. Sprites are things we want to interact with, but sprites stick around. So that doesn't quite help, because we can't walk through a cat, and we want to walk through a door. So probably a tile would be a great solution. So let's close this right now. Over here, we'll close this. And let's use the paint tool. So I'm going to go over to tile. And I'm going to add a new tile. And I'm going to draw kind of a door shape. And I'll make sure I'm in paint down here in the room tool. And place it up here. So, this is an example of using a tile as a background. One of the things I've mentioned as we've talked through the concepts we can use within Bitsy is tiles as background or possibly walls. This is where that background idea really comes into play. We can use tiles to draw things we might need to give more context to players or users or readers, however we want to think about what we're creating, but to give them some little extra visual information about how interactions might be used. In this case, I'm giving the extra clue that this is a different thing and possibly a door. I'm going to go ahead and just call this door just for organizational purposes. Okay, so we have a door tile up here, and what we want to do is we want to interact with this door, see, see what happens, then we want to interact with the key, see what happens, and then we want to interact with the door again. So let's play this. First the door. So I tried to interact with the door, and it said the door is locked. So this was part of its dialogue interaction flow in action, so to speak. It is a branching list, so key is not currently greater than or equal to 1. In fact, if I come over here to inventory, we see key is equal to 0. So it showed us the second thing in that branching list. So let's go ahead and interact with the key. The key is an item. We use it. We used up the key. Key is now equal to 1, which means it is greater than or equal to 1. One of those things is true. And so now if we interact with the door. The key opens the door, and now we were in the other room. Go back the other way, now we're in this room. And now we're back over here. Notice that the interaction applies on a per door basis, or put another way, a per exit basis. So potentially, if we needed to collect a second key to unlock the exit to get back into the other room, we could do that. We could create keys for any number of doors we wanted using the exact same approach that we've now used. Of course, we would need different items per door to do that, but we could do it. So let's look at what I did here. 
So in this first room right here, and remember a room is just a collection of avatar, tile, sprite, item, and palette, which are just the colors over here, I created something called an exit. So down here, exits and endings. Then I popped out its tool right here, and I arranged using move right here where I wanted it in each corresponding room. Then we came down here to exit dialogue, over here popped out the dialogue tool for the exit, and then we looked at the example branching list. Remember, a branching list goes to the first branch whose condition is true, and conditions are just set up as comparisons. So if key and in inventory is greater than or equal to one, which is to say it's been interacted with, the door is unlocked, which means false, and then we show the dialogue, and then the normal interaction goes. Otherwise, the door is locked, we are shown the door is locked, and then we can't do the normal interaction. So, this is actually working with multiple things as we've seen here. Working with the dialogue tool, creating a branching list, working with conditions, which are working with items, which are part of inventory. But we've seen all of these concepts now across multiple videos. We previously talked about in much earlier videos the avatar tiles, sprites, and items. We looked at interactions with sprites, creating dialogue and page breaks, as well as sequence list, cycle list, shuffle list, and branching list in much more recent videos. And we also looked at interacting with items as they apply to branching list. Now we're combining that by creating dialogue interactions as part of exits and endings. So all of these videos, and I encourage you to watch others if this is your first video watching these, all of these connect together and help us bridge concept to concept to concept to break down these more advanced ideas as we move through a series of videos on Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.